from 2009 to 2011, the BMRC conducted a server initiative. And the goal was to go around the city of Chicago to many different institutions, libraries, private archives, museums, universities, to determine which collections they had that were actually relevant to Black experiences in Chicagoland. One of the outcomes of that survey project was we found that there were quite a bit of collections that were not fully processed, meaning that they were not necessarily available to the public to conduct research. So we embarked from 2011 to 2013 on what's called the Color Curtain Processing Project to process important collections relevant to Black historical experiences. One of those collections comes from Shorefront Legacy Center, one of the BMRC's member institutions. Shorefront documents the history of African Americans in Evanston and on the North Shore. This sign that you see here, this emergency sign, comes from the Community Hospital of Evanston collection. The Community Hospital of Evanston was founded by doctors Isabella and Arthur Butler. For African Americans, it was difficult to get routine and regular care at hospitals in Evanston and in Chicago. Most hospitals would only see African Americans for emergencies, and even then, they would often require that Black doctors would be admitted to the hospital for the specific purpose of treating those Black patients. In order to address this issue and to provide more regular routine care for African Americans, the Butlers founded Community Hospital of Evanston. Several times throughout its history, the hospital grew and relocated. This sign here comes from its former location at 2026 Brown Avenue in Evanston. What's really interesting about how this sign came into the possession of Shorefront Legacy Center is that a current board member of Shorefront got a call that the building at Brown Avenue was going to be demolished. And so immediately folks are going to the site trying to recover whatever they can from this historic building. And this board member, according to Dino Robinson, who's the founder of Shorefront, was able to literally yank this emergency sign from the building and take it as an artifact. Sadly, many of the records from the 2026 Brown uh, Avenue site are actually underneath the parking lot of that current building. And this, again, I think sort of underscores the importance of being able to document and preserve, um, but it also shows what work the Color Curtain Processing Project was able to do in ensuring that more people were going to have access to this collection and this really important collection documenting um, the history of Black medical facilities. So this case showcases some items from the Color Curtain Processing Project and specifically some of the key collections that were processed at our member institutions. The image that I have here was taken by Mildred Breed, who documented many of Chicago's urban renewal projects during the 1940s and the 1950s. This particular image showcases the Douglas Lake Metals construction. Um, the building here in the forefront was some of the older more dilapidated housing that was raised in order to create these huge multi-story buildings that would comprise the Lake Meadows construction. And the Lake Meadows construction was designed to really provide a space for middle-class professionals working in the medical district and other families to move into this area. Now, urban renewal has a very controversial history. Part of it on the behalf of the city was about sort of getting rid of housing that was not necessarily seen as fit to live in. That this housing was considered slum housing, not having the proper sort of plumbing and water and spaces and things up to code. However, 
much of this housing existed within African American and poor parts of the city. So in getting rid of this housing and replacing it with newer housing, the concern was, are you then making room for African Americans to continue to live in these parts of the city? So urban renewal has this kind of very controversial history, but one of the reasons why I wanted to select this particular image is because it really does show you the contrast. And the Lake Meadows um, housing still exists to this day. It's about, I think, seven or ten buildings. You can normally see them if you're driving up Lakeshore Drive. Um, and they still do exist as a mixed sort of income community that does still cater to a lot of medical professionals. Another item that we have here from a collection that was processed during the Color Curtain Processing Project comes from the collection of Dr. Christopher Breed, which is housed and cared for at Roosevelt University, one of our member institutions. Dr. Christopher Reed is an esteemed historian of Black Chicago history. He's produced a number of works regarding the early history of African Americans in the first half of the 20th century. We have here a draft manuscript that he um, contributed to his papers and also which he gifted to the Black Metropolis Research Consortium. Also from the Color Curtain Processing Project, we have a program from the collection of Theodore Charles Stone, a world-renowned baritone uh, and opera singer. This particular program from 1949 was um, headlined by Stone. Stone was known for his amazing voice, his flair for fashion, but also his role in really institutionalizing and upholding Black music. He would traditionally sort of mix opera, but then he would also include things like Negro spirituals in his conference, sort of giving ode to both the more traditional European styles of music, but also incorporating music from his heritage. As you can see here, this concert takes place in 1949 in Chicago. Often, Black musicians, especially those performing opera um, and other more European uh, styles of music, had a difficult time booking locations to be able to perform because they were often segregated. As a result, Stone and others founded organizations like the Chicago Music Association and the National Association of Negro Musicians to be ordered to provide a network of spaces for Black musicians to perform and to be able to fellowship and talk about the challenges, but also the wonderful work that they were doing as performers.